Well, it's nearly time for the September release of Home Assistant. And in this release, there's a lot of quality of life improvements, such as improvements to the UI, so the more info section of the climate card, a lot of tile card changes, and also a fair few changes to the group helper as well as a couple of new integrations as usual. Note that this is based on an early version of the beta release, however, it doesn't often change between beta and public release. So let's dive in. This month there doesn't seem to be much focus on the year of the voice, but I'm sure there's a lot going on behind the scenes. However, one thing that is a game changer that was introduced in the previous release is services responding with data. Previously you could only call a service and it would just do the actions. Now you can respond with data. So they started off adding this functionality to the calendar entries and now they've tackled the weather forecast. So now you can call a service to get daily or hourly forecast information. You can also get twice daily, but this option doesn't seem to be working at the moment. This is probably because it's an early beta release. They've also introduced this change to the Lovelace card as well, so that you can display daily or hourly forecasts, whereas previously you could only show daily. And with this change comes the deprecation of the forecast attribute within the weather entity. Now the next one's an interesting one. With robot lawn mowers becoming more popular, the Home Assistant developers have decided to start integrating it into Home Assistant. So they've started off with just an MQTT mower component, but I'm sure more will come. From the mower entity, you can do all the basic functions you'd expect. So you can start and pause mowing as well as send it back to the dock. There's also a complimentary new service so that you can include it in automations. Over the past few releases, they've been making entities look a lot nicer and also giving a lot of love to the tile card. And in this release, they've given a lot more love to those two areas as well. The climate entity now has a dial and preset buttons rather than a fairly bland text and drop down boxes on the entity. You can now also add this functionality to the tile card as well. Covers previously had updates to entities and now you can add those to the tile card as well. So you can now add cover position and tilt position, making it much more convenient to set them partially open. So now on to groups, there's been quite a few changes in this area. So one of them is a creation of a template sensor helper from the UI. I think this is great and will probably help many people preventing them from restarting Home Assistant a lot or reloading the configuration. As an example, I created an outdoor temperature sensor based on the temperature attribute of the weather forecast entity. For the next little group change, I'm going to use the template temperature sensor that I just created. You can already create group sensors in Home Assistant and you can get them to show, for example, minimum temperatures across a group of temperature sensors. But now it shows a preview of what it will look like when you're creating it so that you can do a sense check to see what it looks like and it shows the values you're expecting. And finally on groups, you can now group event entities together. Event entities were added in the previous release and they've already been given some love. So now you can group them together. I could see these being used, for example, say if you've got two doorbell buttons, one at the front door and one at the back door, then you might want to group these together and then have them as one automation that triggers your inside doorbell chime. Although you might want to have different chimes for the front and back door, to be honest, but you get the idea. Now the release notes say that the onboarding process has been updated. So if you're setting up Home Assistant for the first time, then you might see some changes. I can't test this easily at the moment because there's not some new images available for the beta release, but I will do when it's on public release. They actually made some changes on the last release for onboarding and so that you could search for your location rather than just hunting around on the map, so that was quite good. So I'll be interested to see what they do. Now a few of the bits and bobs for the release are that there's a new integration for the Slage Smart Locks, there's a new integration for Yard and Smart Sprinklers, and a few of the bits as well. There's some breaking changes, but no major ones as far as I can see. There's a small change around how you need to manage ESP home devices if you're changing the board type, but I wouldn't really call it a breaking change. Also, MQTT device trackers now only update if there's a state change, which I think makes total sense anyway. I just have to say that I love how many changes you can make in the UI now. My Home Assistant instance is a bit of a mess now because I'm still using YAML files for configuring my dashboards and it's totally unnecessary these days. I've put links to the release notes in the description as well as all the changes for this release so have a browse through yourself. Well that's it for today so please consider subscribing if you enjoyed the video and comment down below. So thanks until next time. <laughs>